Welcome to episode 252, Let Your Presence Be Your Legacy with Tori Gordon. Welcome to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, mindset specialist and performance coach. And here on the show, I'm going to challenge you to think deeper, commit to greatness, and develop a stronger mindset. You'll hear stories from those who are living life on their terms, and you'll receive strategies that will help you level up. So the question is, are you ready to be your own 1%? Let's get started. Hey everybody! Welcome back to the Be That One Percent podcast. I uh, have a we're this is different today on the show. We're actually in a studio. Uh, Tori actually suggested this space, and it's so far pretty incredible. So I want to thank you for that. But I want to I want to talk about Tori a little bit here uh, because I recently had the honor of getting connected with you, and she's moved from Atlanta to Vegas. And since I've met her, I've felt nothing but warmth and inspiration and just uh, a, a commitment to the work. And that's what I really, really respect so far and admire. And I'm excited to dive deeper. But a little bit about Tori is she's the host of the Coachable Podcast. She's one of TikTok's top 100 female creators, award-winning content creator, trauma-informed breathwork facilitator, high-performance coach. Uh, her work reaches nearly 1 million people worldwide. She has worked with international brands like Nature Maid, Canva, and BetterHelp, and was also named top 10 female mindset coaches by Yahoo News in 2020, mm. just to name a few mm -hmm. things that you've done. Um, so welcome to the show, Tori. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Person and yeah, just continue to grow my network and have opportunity just to like develop more and know more about you too. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. to be here. Cool. So uh, usually I do a rapid fire kind of series here before we get going into the meat and stuff of the episode. So first question, I kind of already answered it for you. Where were you born and raised? Born in uh, Columbus, Mississippi, but raised in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So I'm a Southern girl through and through. Oh, the, I don't know why I said Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta. You weren't okay. wrong. I okay. lived in Atlanta for the last seven <laughs> Got years. It. Got yeah. it. Okay. Uh, what's a philosophy that you live by? Oh, man. Um, you can't heal what you hate. Mm. Yeah. Love that. That's good. What's your definition of failure? <laughs> I don't know if I subscribe to that. That's um, an illusion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What does the world need more of right now? Mm. Presence. Agreed. One of my favorite things. What's a game-changing book that you've read recently or in the past? Return to Love by Marion Williamson. Hmm. What's a solid piece of advice that you have received recently or in the past that has served you well? Oh, so many. Um, watch what people do more than listen to what they say. Yeah. If you want to get to know someone, watch how they yeah. watch what they do. Good. I mean, unless you know if they're in integrity, right? For sure. Last thing, uh, what did you have to, and this is a load of questions, so I don't expect you to go <laughs> super deep unless you want to with it. What did you have to give up or sacrifice in order to get to where you are today? Um, gosh, who I thought I was. Yeah. I think part of it is dying to your idea of yourself so that you mm -hmm. can step into the truth of who you are and um, that highest potential. And so it's like a continual releasing and letting go of uh, my need to control outcomes <laughs> <laughs> and be yes. in control of my life. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I would not be here if I uh, stayed on the straight and narrow, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for those <laughs> answers, beautiful answers. Uh, let's, let's springboard off of this, the control piece, okay. the certainty piece. I think most people, uh, if not all people have such a strong craving for certainty. They want to be able to predict. They want to know things are going to work out. They want to know that if they say yes or no to this opportunity, that there's some favorable thing on the other side. Uh, how have you handled that? Or how do you go about communicating to yourself when 
entering uncertainty or taking a leap, or in this case, maybe reinventing yourself, letting go of something and stepping into something new. Yeah. I think this has been a continual lesson that life has presented me over and over again. And every time it's like, at least in the past, like three or four years, I've been aware of it Mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, this is one of those opportunities where life is asking me to let go and to trust and to deepen my faith and my trust in a supportive, loving power that is greater than me. Yes. And um, that has my best interest in mind. And I think we grow up in a society and in a culture where we think we have to fend for ourselves. Like it's up to us, you know, that like, if I want to, have something if I want to create something it's up to me and I've got to do it or I've you know there's no one coming to save us that's Mm -hmm. the that's kind of the message and agreed I think we have to take full responsibility for our lives and our circumstances and what we decide to do about that Mm -hmm. but there have certainly been moments where I felt like I hit a ceiling or a wall in terms of my potential or what I was experiencing relationally or financially or in my career and always to get to the next phase, it's required me to s- give up, as you were just asking, give up what I thought I knew or what I, the way I thought it was going to go, my plan per se, yes. and be willing to step into something that feels, um, and a lot of times like you're kind of walking around in the dark trying to get your mm-hmm. bearings a little bit. And that is a place where most people, um, run from much less they don't put themselves in that situation like willingly it's right. oftentimes something like life forces you to do and when you keep trying to um pursue your plan and it doesn't work out it's like what are you going to do so one of the things i realized very young um younger than most is that life is uncertainty like that is its nature mm-hmm. almost like peter crone says like water is wet life is uncertain. Um, I could never have told you when I woke up this morning, I would get a phone call that would change my life today, Mm -hmm. but I did. And that is something I couldn't have predicted. Right. I couldn't have planned. It was, could I have hoped for it? Maybe, but I didn't know that was going to be the outcome. You and I, I don't know what you're going to ask me next. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, And I think there's something to be said about planning and being prepared for things, but Also understanding that life will life. It will (laughs) present you with things that you're not expecting. And I think our power lies in how do we learn to adapt to the unfolding of life Mm -hmm. as it's presented to us? Because when we try to grip on to the way we want it to go and the way we expected it and our expectations, that's when suffering, like we experience suffering. Mm -hmm. It's when our expectations don't get met. Right. And you can see that in your relationships. As soon as your husband or your wife doesn't do what you right. what you expected them, you're like, what the heck? You know? Yeah. But we tend to do that with life all the time. And then we're disappointed or we're upset. And so for me, it's about how can I learn to be more like water mm-hmm. and flow with the unfolding? Because the moment I try to attach to it and hold on to it is the moment that I get in my own way yeah. and I block the the blessing, the lesson, the thing that wants to come forward and come through in my life because I'm, I'm still attached to the way things were. Yeah. And so that sounds like a little ethereal, but it like practically yeah. has looked like sometimes like withholding the urge to do something I want to do. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe in my relationship, it's like, I have this need to like keep it together, but life is saying, hey, it's okay to let it go. It's okay to let them go in this direction and you go in this direction. And I think our fear around letting some, releasing something Mm -hmm. comes from a a deeper fear of, am I going to be okay? And I think a lot of people live with this level of anxiety all the time and this need to control because they don't have a trust or a belief or a faith in something that says it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And if we could embody that, if we could actually allow ourselves to tap into a frequency in which we believe that everything is working for us and that actually no matter what happens, it's going to, it's okay. Mm -hmm. There, 
is a peace that you can experience despite circumstance. Yeah. And I think that's real success when you can get to that point. Yeah. Because then it's an internal game and you can always control the inside. Exactly. Have you seen Stutz? No. It's a documentary on Netflix. Um, he's a psychiatrist and it's, do you know who Jonah Hill is? Yeah. Yeah. It's Jonah Hill's psychologist. At oh, okay. And he like documents his journey with him. Cool. And one of the things he shares like multiple frameworks within that, but one of them is the three life cer certainties. Mm -hmm. It's like no matter who you are, what age you are, what demographic, life will give you these three things. One of them is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two is pain. Mm -hmm. And three is work. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, you're yeah. going to have those three things. And so, you know, when we talk about leading a life or or building something on your terms, like the more you accept that that's just a part of life, mm -hmm. then it makes it easier to navigate or find resources or find support groups that help you move through things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think it's our attachment to the progress, the momentum, the the things that we do end up creating. Because I think that there's so much pleasure and joy and, and power that comes in making a decision saying, hey, I don't want this anymore. I mm -hmm. want to create something new. And then actually seeing that come to fruition and we can then get attached to that mm -hmm. and be like look what i did look what i created and but what happens if you get an unexpected phone call one day i mean though those uncertainties were my reality and so i live very up close and personal with that the potential that that is always at my doorstep mm -hmm. and to never get too comfortable mm -hmm. um it's been interesting though, because I experienced a, a, long, a chain of loss over the course of a few years. I lost my mother, my sister, three grandparents and uncle and lived through an F4 tornado. All of which I didn't ask for and were beyond my control, right? Mm -hmm. These were things that were uncertain, unplanned, unpredictable things. You get a call and now cancer's entered your life. You know, you get, you wake up one day and you go to school and now there's a tornado in your backyard. and. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you don't see coming. <laughs> and in my world, I call that the hit. In Coachable, I talk about life as a game. And it's like that hit you don't see coming. It's when you get knocked out and you can't catch your Blast. breath. Yeah. And you're like, okay, how do I start to get up? And, and for a, a lot of us, when we get hit, you get disoriented. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm a little woozy right now. I don't even know, like catch my bearings. But that those things over the course of years showed me it's always that close, even though a lot of us live in a world where we think it'll never happen to me. Mm -hmm. um, I had that awareness very young. But one of the lessons I've had to learn, and I think anyone who's experienced some traumatic level of loss like that might might relate in some way, which is, the flip side of that coin, which is actually you're allowed to enjoy your life. You're actually allowed to relax. Mm -hmm. Because when you're always like, oh, what's that next thing that could be uncertain that could bring this house of cards tumbling down? You kind of live very hyper vigilant, right. like what, what's the next thing that could go quote unquote wrong? Um, or what's the monster under the bed that I don't know is there? And for me, the healing journey has looked a lot like, hey, it's okay. And there isn't always something that's, at, you know, like coming mm -hmm. to like ruin the day. You're allowed to enjoy yeah. this season. You're allowed to be here and fully be alive and be present in this moment without protecting yourself 24-7. Mm -hmm. How often have, do you reference all the things that you've been through mm. to like reinforce your resiliency, your strength, your determination, all of that? Is it is it something that you consciously do or do you think it's just over the like the years of you personally developing, it's just kind of embedded in there now? Yeah, I think I reference it more um, when I'm asked about it Okay, um, more than anything because I, I get – you know, I talk a lot about, and part of my work and my my career now is telling my story and mm -hmm. telling about how I came to some of these ideas and understandings personally. So I reference it a lot in that way. But um, 
day to day and when life presents me with people or circumstances that are kind of bringing and activating something in me, whether it's a fear and insecurity, a limiting belief, some, something like that, I, I do, I, I refer back to times in my life where I'm like, what does, how does this feel familiar, right? What is this reminding me of? Mm-hmm. Um, because I can use that as information and as data for how to move forward and move through it in a healthy right. way. And I just remember that I have breathed through and lived through all of my hardest days. Like there's nothing I haven't gotten through yet. Mm -hmm. And so when things feel overwhelming, which they do. And they probably will. (laughs) And they will continue to because life is cyclical and seasonal. And as, because I have literally, I have a tattoo right here on my neck that says this too shall pass. Mm Mm-hmm. I self-reference a lot in that regard (laughs) because I've needed some of these reminders because on those days where you're in it, it feels like it's going to last forever. And I have to have a reminder that, hey, it's all temporary, Mm -hmm. the good and the bad. So when things are really bad, it's like, this is not going to last forever. And when it's really, really good, be so deeply grateful and present and in it and allow yourself to soak it all up because- yeah. It it doesn't last forever. And that's the beauty and the contrast of life in in the you know the duality of life. That's cool. Yeah. So I know trauma is something that you talk about and loss can be experienced as as trauma in many different ways. Sure. What is something that people don't know that they should know about trauma in your from your perspective? Mm. Trauma is not just what happens to you. Um, It's what happens inside of you as a result of what happens to you. Um, I think trauma, you know, we talk about it in terms of being an overwhelming uh, flood uh, or something that happened. It was too much, too soon, too fast. Mm. The nervous system couldn't regulate, it couldn't process, it couldn't integrate everything it was experiencing at once. And so that energy gets stuck in the body. And um, as I kind of mentioned earlier in one of your rapid fire questions is a motto that I live by is we can't heal what we hate. And I've come to that conclusion because in my hatred of the thing that hurt me, or the way that I am as a result of the thing that happened to me. Maybe I'm hypervigilant. Maybe I'm on guard a lot of times. Maybe I'm constantly looking for what's the what's the thing that could go wrong here. Mm-hmm. I could hate that about myself. Be like, I wouldn't be this way if that hadn't happened, mm-hmm. right? But I think in that is an energy of rejection and of saying it's wrong that I'm this way. And we can't heal from that state. We've actually got to bring compassion and love and empathy into it and say, hey, it's actually not wrong that you're this way. It actually makes sense. It's actually right. Actually, your body and your your brain is very intelligent. It's trying mm-hmm. to keep you alive. And it's actually doing the exact thing it ne- feels like it needs to do to predict something that might happen in your future to keep you alive. Right. So instead of making it wrong, can we actually see that it's useful and it's served a purpose? And it might not be serving you now, but we don't have to hate it. We don't have to judge it. And in so doing that, we soften that part of us that feels the need to be so rigid and so um, that is afraid, really, it softens and it feels a little bit more safe Mm -hmm. because it's really our own judgment of it Mm -hmm. and of ourselves (laughs) that continues to alienate and isolate it and says, "It it shouldn't be this way. I lived a lot of my life thinking it shouldn't be this way. And I know someone listening can think back into something that happened into their li- in their lives, whether someone betrayed you, whether you lost someone that you love, whether you were fired from a job or didn't get the job that you thought you deserved, whatever it is, and you, and you think it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't have happened that way. It shouldn't have went down like that. What I realized is that perspective puts me in the seat of 
God in the sense that I think I know how life should be, right? That's like saying the sun should be over there, <laughs> right? It shouldn't be in this part of the sky. Mm -hmm. It should be over there. And that goes back to that idea of control. I need to be in control and that I am only happy if life follows and unfolds according to the way I see fit. Right. So I've had to learn that actually I'm not God and I don't want to be God. <laughs> I can't be God. And, but that's required me to become a little less like hands off and mm -hmm. be willing and allowing life to unfold. But to your answer your question about trauma, I think it's um, one of the biggest lies that people believe is that time heals all wounds. And I don't believe that. I think it's, you know, one of those snake oil salesman kind of pitches where it's like, just wait it out. Or it's, it's, what we're saying is actually, if I can get enough distance from that trauma or that event, then I'll be quote unquote healed. But it really is, that is stored in your nervous system and in your body. And whether you realize it or not, it's gonna show up in the things that upset you, trigger you, it'll leak out mm -hmm. in different ways. And I really believe that it's only love applied to those wounded places that actually heals us. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Presence, you mentioned, is something that this world needs more of. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And so it sounds like you value presence. What led you to, one, the word, mm -hmm. uh, two, what it means, and three, like embodying that? Mm -hmm. Like how, when did that become important to you? Yeah. I think before it took on like a spiritual meaning yeah. to me, when I was younger, I was always so attracted to people who had a presence about them, mm. right? I grew up in a town. And was that, is that like what you felt around them? Is that like? I think it can be described in a couple of ways. For, if, you, if someone walks in the room and you've ever heard someone say, man, like they've just got a presence sure. about them. What does that really mean, right? Yes. I think what that's, for me, that is saying that something about them mm -hmm. I would say more so, it's a more so energetic thing than mm -hmm. anything else, is it that it demands your attention. Mm. It's asking for your attention and it's worthy of your attention um, for whatever reason. But it draws you to take where you were focused and turn it towards mm -hmm. them. And so I was always really inspired and interested in people that could be captivating in that way mm -hmm. whether it was speakers whether it was athletes whether it was specifically speakers i would always be like wow what is it about them that's so captivating mm -hmm. um and i wanted that i thought it was attractive i thought it was um inspiring and so i think that's how it started for me mm -hmm. um in wanting to kind of embody that myself, because one of the mottos that I live by um, is to leave people in places better than I found them. So I want my presence mm -hmm. to leave a space or conversation or something better than I found it. And I want that presence to then be felt when I'm not here, that someone can say, hey, that interaction, made a difference on me that that conversation i'll think about that again when i you know when she's not around mm -hmm. that to me is a legacy that is worth leaving and so because i've been i've thought a lot a lot about death and about legacy and how it will be remembered presence was a part of that yeah um because you can feel presence when it's gone right right when mm -hmm. someone i remember being with my sister and my mom both my, we took my sister off life support um, about two weeks after that tornado came through our home. And I remember being with her and feeling her presence and then her presence leaving, mm -hmm. transitioning. And I was still with her body, but her presence wasn't there. So I, I realized that presence is not just located here yeah. in my body. It's, right. it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a spiritual being in a human body, having a physical 3D experience. So that got me very interested in, okay, so what is my presence, mm -hmm. my my soul? Mm -hmm. 
the thing that animates this body actually um, that touches someone's heart. Yeah. And that has been the journey I've been on since then. And so when I say I think the world needs more presence, I think what I'm saying is I think people need to be connected to their heart and connected to obviously this moment. Yes. Um, because it's fleeting, you know. Right. It can be here and then it's and then it's not. Yeah. And then what's left. I mean, what I love about what you said is that it's multidimensional. Mm -hmm. It's not just here, it's bigger, mm -hmm. right? And I, I do agree with that. I also think that presence <clears throat> allows you to get out of the linear model of time mm -hmm. where you're not analyzing the past or you're not anticipating the future, totally. but you're co-creating with life. Mm -hmm. Where life is being lived <laughs> here. Exactly. Which is all we have. Exactly. Right. So you enter this like vertical eternity totally. where possibility Who is it? Exists. Is it... Um... Eckhart Tolle, I can't remember if it was Eckhart Tolle that says, it calls it the eternal now. Yes, the eternal now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like, so if we look at it from tomorrow never comes because when it gets here, it's today. Right. It makes sense logically and hopefully in your heart as well that in order to live life and squeeze as much as you can out of it, wherever you are, both in good and in bad, right now is where that mm -hmm. happens, you know? Mm -hmm. And so- when I, like presence, I would say is my number one value. So mm -hmm. when I'm with people, I want to be fully there. Mm -hmm. I want them to feel like all of me is in this moment. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing else more important than this conversation that mm -hmm. we're having. And through that, I listen more. Right. I ask the the question that keeps this tight. I uh, I learn, I share, mm -hmm. I, you know, we're able to co-create at something that that may not be possible if I'm in my head. All right analyzing or being insecure or allowing fear to creep in and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So presence has been super near and dear to my heart. How much of presence do you think is correlated to success? I think- Or is it correlated? I think it is because I don't think you can be present without being aware. And I think you need, self-awareness is like the number one thing mm -hmm. in terms of ability to truly be successful. And the way I define success, probably different than most people do. You know, you just said something about presence being multidimensional yeah. and getting you out of linear time, yes. which I love. Because most of us think we're we're not in an intimate relationship with life. With life. We're in an intimate relationship <laughs> with our mind, thinking about the future, right. thinking about the past. And life is, like you said, happening here. Um, and in order to be present, what you're doing is you're bringing your awareness mm -hmm. to this moment. Mm -hmm. And that is where the creation happens. Um, for me, success is not just about creating external circumstances or being able to manipulate circumstances mm -hmm. for my good or for the greater good. It's also about integrity and alignment within myself because I've lived a life that looked really good, that didn't feel really good. So for me, success looks like living a life that feels as good as it looks. Mm -hmm. It's about having a business that feels as good to operate as it does to bring in revenue every single month. It's, it's about being in relationships with people that are co-regulatory and nourishing and reciprocal, right? Because uh, we know how it doesn't feel good to only be giving and, right. and in circumstances and um, not have that reciprocation. So I think it is directly linked and correlated in terms of presence and awareness. And from this space, that's where your power lies, power to change, to transform and to create. Yes whatever you want. And to to create, I want to double click on that too, because if you're only transferring back from the past to the future, chances are you're either creating, you're just creating more of what you know. Right. Right. Which I don't know if that's creation. If it, the way I look at creation is like something new, new, something that builds on top of maybe something that existed before, but it's different, mm -hmm. you know? And the only way to do that is with a blank canvas in some way. Right. Which means this new this new moment right now is a chance to do something that you have never done before to a level degree that 
has never been attempted, mm -hmm. whatever that means to you, right? Mm -hmm. That could mean I want to be stronger in this way. So this moment is an opportunity to do that in a different way right. or to do that in a better way or a, a greater way or mm -hmm. whatever it is that your definition is, you know? Sure. And so um, I think that success and presence are extremely correlated. Mm -hmm. And the more present you are in your pursuit or in your attraction of success, the more sustainable becomes, but also the bigger the ripple mm -hmm. because you understand what you're doing more when you're in it yeah, so that you can explain it. And you're present to what works and what doesn't work Correct. and how to adapt and what needs to be, you know, tweaked, tweaked refined, a little bit yes. because if you're not present to that, then you're unaware of it right? and you can't change what you're unaware of. Exactly. So you're living off of default. Exactly. Right. And yeah. so going back to sovereignty, like there's nothing more sovereign than knowing that you can make a decision, that you're making the decision, and you're in the creation of what that decision brings. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. And when you operate from that, then you understand that regardless of what happens, good, bad, and different, this is something I chose. That's the word. I think, and that's the crux of what I teach, is the whole game of life <laughs> about being human, the kicker is that we get to choose. <laughs> it's like, what? choose your own adventure, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We wake up every day and you get to decide what you're gonna do with the time that you have. That amount of time is uncertain to us all. Sure, You can have an awareness of that or not, but you get to decide, am I gonna be sitting here thinking about my list of things I need to get done, or am I gonna be willing to let that be mm -hmm. and be here. Mm -hmm. And that's a choice. Yeah. Everything is a choice. Everything you say yes to, you're saying no to a hundred other things mm -hmm. that you could have said yes. And I think that's the whole idea is can we become responsible and accountable for our choices? Mm -hmm. That is what real leaders do. Absolutely. I mean, if you want to talk about leadership, it's yes. not, it's, it's, <laughs> real leaders don't play the blame game. And it's like, oh, well, this happened because you didn't, you know, you mm -hmm. didn't show up here, da, 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 da. It's like, how have I been responsible for, how can I be responsible for the choices that I've made that have been part of getting us to this this point? Yeah. Um, and in the whole game analogy, I was like, if you want to be a champion, if you truly want to be that 1%, because not everyone is, <laughs> you know, exceeding at the highest levels, look at what they do. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they are responsible for their time, their schedule, what they're putting in their bodies, their sleep, their habits, you know, their screen time, all of the, the things that I would call the practice yeah. of life. Like, what are you practicing every day? Because you're going to play like you practice. Mm -hmm. You're going to show up when it's game time and you're going to do and repeat the habits and the rituals that you've been doing, whether you were aware of them or not. So can we bring awareness and presence to what we're doing and then be willing to say, hey, this is working, this is not. And for the things that aren't working, let's adjust. Yeah. And that's, I think, in your ability to do that, that then creates like a open roadmap for yeah. continued success. How much courage do you think it takes to live that type of lifestyle? First, I guess, courage towards presence, to be present in this moment, mm -hmm. to create, to surrender, to be here, whatever. And then courage to live, let's say, the 1% lifestyle or just to be top notch in whatever yeah. it is that you do. Um. I think it takes a lot of, of courage to be here because everything in our culture and our society is inviting you not to be. Explain. The highest form of currency now is not money, it's your, your attention. You know, your phone is asking you for your attention, your kids are asking for your attention, your wife, your spouse, your job, everything is pulling on you mm -hmm. to say, be here, think about this, plan for this. You know what I mean? And so it's almost an act of defiance <laughs> to be here, right? And it takes self-control, it takes discipline mm -hmm. at times, and it takes courage. Because also what I've found in my own life and in, in my work with, with 
high performers and people of all kinds, honestly, is that we run from this moment. Yes. Because we've never been taught how to be here. And two, we have an idea that if we are here, it's going to be very scary and uncomfortable because we've only ever learned how to be in our heads and be thinking about the next thing or reminiscing on what was. You know, we haven't had the teachers and the mentors and the examples of deep loving awareness. Just like be here with you, be here now, like Ram Das talks about. Mm -hmm. So I think we're afraid of it. We're afraid of what we don't know or what we don't understand. And so I've watched myself and my clients year, like over time hmm. just run from their own internal world. Because if I slow down enough and get still enough, I don't know what's underneath the right. surface. Right. Or I'm afraid to fully be seen. Yes. And what's interesting in my kind of thought and research and all this is that I think that that's one of the biggest fears why people don't become present mm -hmm. is like, if I am and I'm vulnerable and someone sees that, then they could reject it, not love it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is that when you're fully present, you're not even thinking about you. No. It, you is not even a thing. Yeah. Like you're so not you that you're whole. Mm -hmm. You're one with everything, everyone which I think is like a void sort of that is uncomfortable because the mind wants to be able to understand something. It wants to be able to say what it is mm -hmm. so it can predict it, so it can like control it, so mm -hmm. it can- Protect from- Protect from it. But if you don't even know what it is that you're trying to protect yourself from, that's like the ultimate exposure. Right. But it's also the ultimate freedom. And unifier. Yeah. And to your water analogy, that's what it is. It just flows, mm -hmm. which is why athletes, when they're in their zone, they call it, I just flow. flow. I'm not thinking, I'm just being. Yes. Right. And, and that is actually our most optimized state of mind. I would say that that's very, very closely linked. Presence is a prereq prerequisite for connection. Yes. 100%. If you want to have deep loving connection in your life, if you feel lonely, if you feel like you're the only one in a room of crowded people, if you mm -hmm. feel like no one gets me, no one understands me, I would love community, but you know, I can't seem to find that. Ask yourself, what is my level of presence in the relationships that I'm in? Because presence, your presence invites someone else. It's an invitation. It evokes it, yeah. It's an invitation for someone else to come be with you and to meet you in that moment. And that's intimacy. Mm -hmm. And we can have intimacy of all kinds, but into me, you see, you can't have presence. You can't <laughs> have connection without that. I love that. So yes, to answer your question, it takes a ton of courage to be seen, to be intimate, to connect. And there's an inherent risk in that, that someone could say, I'm not willing to be vulnerable and to be here in this moment with you, or I don't have the capacity. Yeah. Some people just don't have the capacity or the awareness yet to be in that space. And that's also part of their journey. And that's also okay. But yeah, it takes a lot, a lot <laughs> of courage. So I think the connection piece is, is really, really linked to presence. And you were talking about flow state. Mm -hmm. I think presence is also ex intricately interwoven into play. Mm-hmm. Because when you think about children that play, they're not thinking about time. Right. <laughs> right. They're not thinking about what's the, how long do I, you know yeah. what I mean? They're just in it and time kind of goes out the window. And if you can think about something in your life where you kind of lose track of time, whether it's reading a book or listening to a podcast or traveling, in nature, traveling, yeah. whatever it is, that's when you have follow that. Yes. Follow that and and start to pay attention to that because you've tapped into presence and a flow. Yes. That you where other things feel a little bit more rigid and forced and hard for you. Right. So pay attention to where you kind of lose track of time. And to add on that, I think novelty is huge, mm -hmm. like newness, you know, and what's more new than this moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. And and who who you become that led to this moment. That's where you, you get to play with life. <laughs> yes. That's where it becomes so fun. Right. Where you're just like, 
I, somebody used to say, I can't remember who it was. They were just like, I would wake up and be like, um, I can't wait to be surprised by life. Basically, it's just like in the moment, like you, yeah, you just get to be with the natural next new novel moment and the next person that walks into your world, you know, the the next interaction that you have, it gets to be surprising and exciting mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of redundant right. and Scripted. predictable. Right. That's boring. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what's something that um, you've wanted to talk about on a podcast but haven't yet or something that's new that you're kind of like thinking about? Mm. That you're like, you know what's fascinating me right now is mm -hmm. this. Ooh, interesting. I've been talking a lot about the messy middle mm. lately. So one of the things I have noticed in my the season, the seasons are changing right now, right? We just le are leaving winter. We're coming into spring. And I have also very much internally been experiencing that transition. Um, and we talked earlier about letting go. So there's yeah. a period of time where when you get this revelation, right, where maybe like what I'm doing is not working or something's got to change or I need to go to the next level or life's asking me to expand. Mm -hmm. Life's asking me to grow. We all get those nudges and those pings. And I felt that, I, I feel that, continually in different ways, but I felt that a lot last year um, as I was getting my footing and my grounding here in Vegas. And I went and spoke at a conference in Nashville not too long ago. And I saw a man there who I'd never met in person, but he knew me at the very beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. We had talked before and he said, you know, Tori, when I saw you a couple of years ago, you were being planted mm -hmm. and now you're you're flourishing and you're blossoming in all these different ways. And I could see what he meant by that. And also at the same time, I felt myself being planted again in that season, like of, of something new wants to come forward and be born. And so this messy middle is like, for me, when you get planted or a dream, a, a desire, a mission, something in, that you want to bring forward into the world, you go into the darkness, a seed gets planted in the darkness, right? And then it gets watered and it gets there's a germination process and all of this. And it can feel really scary because it's, it is that uncertainty. Mm -hmm. You don't know how it's going to come into form. You don't know how it's going to take shape or take root. You just know this is what I'm being called to. This is what I'm committed to and my intention is. And I'm also just going to put one foot in front of the other every day. Mm -hmm. And there can be a string of time, like a period of time where that feels like all you're doing. And that actually you're like, am I making progress? Is this, does this matter? Putting in the reps, showing up, doing the routine, da, 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 da. And I think part of that for me has been about learning to deepen my trust muscle. Yeah. Because I have felt like I've been in this messy middle. I just moved and... I told my friend the other day, I'm like, I'm not here, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. where I, I'm not like in my old house, but I'm not fully in my new house yet. I was in the middle, I was in between places. And that can feel um, ungrounding a lot. And mm -hmm. so I've been trying to find grace and compassion and purpose in that middle instead of needing to have the certainty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of like, I know I'm on the path and I know I'm doing all the right things to get where I want to go. Because sometimes you don't have the clarity yet, yeah. like around. Some people are like, like, what do you want to do? Or what do you want to create? Or who do you, what do you want th this next year to look like? And that hasn't fully come into focus yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's in that messy middle that I think our, our faith, for me, my faith was tested and is tested of like, do you trust me? Yeah. Do you trust me? Life is asking me, do you trust me to the, the timing of your life mm -hmm. is perfect? <laughs> so <laughs> what I'm thinking about in my mind is like you have the beginning of where you came from and then the end of where you're trying to go in the messy middle. That, that's like a conversation for me. Yeah. Right. It, that, that's what I think about. I think of like, OK, we started this podcast. Now, yeah. now we're in, we're in the, the middle. Yeah. Right. And then there's an end because mm -hmm. we have time and sure. all that. But like 
it's in the middle that I think one can extract the most lessons mm -hmm. if one is present and and maybe loves part or all of that messiness. Because mm -hmm. it's through the messiness that you learn the organization, mm -hmm. that you sharpen the awareness around what that means or what this means and and the trust and, and all the belief that when you do get to the destination, you appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes a springboard to another messy middle. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we spend most of our time there. Exactly, totally. Yeah. Because it's a lot of times in this work and in, uh, just being naturally in this industry, we're asking each other these questions all <laughs> yes, the time. Totally. And there's sometimes it's like, I'm not in a definitive, uh, there's, you know, I'm yeah. working on some things, but there's a lot of things that are in process. Right. Right. And I think I'm deepening my appreciation for being continually in process. Mm. Um, because like you said, you, then you get to an end point and then the process starts all <laughs> over right. again. You yeah. know what I mean? And so it's almost like this, when you were just talking about it being a conversation, I got the imagery of like an inhale and an exhale. Yes. And it's this like, it's the in between. <laughs> yeah. It's like the- <laughs> Oxygen coming right. in, actually, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And sometimes you don't know where in that process you are yet. Right. And you're like, I don't have a definitive or clear answer. I just know I am here. And yes. that's where I think life says, again, come back to the present. Just be here now and yeah. release the need So we to just know. tied that yeah. to three different things. The cycle of breath, mm -hmm. to the cycle of the seasons, mm -hmm. to the cycle of life, mm -hmm. all mirror each other. They're just at different degrees, yep. right? And so I think an understanding of all of those things helps you find appreciation both in the micro and the macro. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, and just like a daily practice for me, because I love breath and breath is for me such a teacher and a connector to these other, my multidimensionality. Sure. Um, it's, if I can bring awareness to my breath, which is always with me, I can tap into the wisdom mm -hmm. that's, I already have, that's already within that it, I don't have to go out looking for. It's like, what is that that's already within me? That actually it's okay to be on the exhale or to be on the inhale. And actually all of it's serving, all of it's necessary. Yes. Um, it's only in my judgment of it that makes it wrong. The damn judgment. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. So for, for uh, le going back to leadership real quick, mm -hmm. aside from presence and maybe courage, what skill, characteristic, and or mindset do you think is essential for a leader to possess in order to create like maximum impact? Mm, yeah, first one is self-awareness. The mm -hmm. second one is um, extremely linked to courage because yeah. I think leaders go first. They do. Right, so if I have a saying, that I will never ask my clients to do something I'm unwilling to do myself. I think a true leader is on the front lines. It's, mm -hmm. it's the one that's leading the the charge into battle. It's not the one that's like, everyone go first, and then mm -hmm. I'll be the one you guys all protect right. and get around me. You know right, what I mean? Right. It's saying, I will go where no one else is gone. I will, and I can only lead people to places I have <laughs> been myself. So willingness, I think, is is what it would come down to um, and what I think being coachable is all about, is willing to say, I, I don't show know. up. Or it, I don't know. Or I, I don't I, know. I, yeah. It's willing to say. Uh, I love you. <laughs> I love you. It's willing to say, me too. Mm -hmm. It's willing to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Um. And to go first, it's being willing in a crowded room of investors to say, hey, this is this is the idea and the vision I have. And I don't know if you guys are going to be on board with it, yeah. but this is what I really feel called to, to share. You know, it's like it's being willing to be seen mm -hmm. um, because you become the reference point as a leader for everyone in your tribe everyone in your community to um like where are you leading people what are you what are you what are you leading right you know right so 
willingness to to go first, to be wrong, to say the thing, to initiate the conversation, to let go mm-hmm. of the way you used to do things, to embrace a new way of adapting and innovating. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you can be that without also being present, without also being courageous. And Brene Brown says, you know, courage, the, the, the root word of courage comes from cur, which is the heart. So you have to be in your heart hmm. and be connected to your heart in order to genuinely make an impact. Because I think we've all experienced leadership, quote unquote, leaders that are disconnected from those things. Mm-hmm. And it falls hollow, you know, if on... I would rather follow someone who admits that they're, I don't even necessarily say broken, but like doesn't have it all together than someone who pretends Yeah, all day. Right. You almost can tell in their tonality and even in their their actions. Posturing. Yeah, and exactly. All the things. Yeah. 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 There's so a level authenticity. of humility and groundedness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I'm curious. What do you For think? traits? Um, yeah. So skill, characteristic, or mindset. <clears throat> so... Since I can't use courage, yeah. <laughs> uh, I also I think there's I'm I'm writing a book all on communication, cool. and and it's for leaders, and so I'll share one of those five. There's like five C's, but aside from courage, I think the second most important is curiosity. Mm-hmm. You know, curious curiosity for how you work, how someone else works, totally. how things are put together. Curiosity for what's going to come, mm-hmm. for what this moment can be, um, for how far you can go. Right, I think. When we keep that center, uh, we ask more questions than we give answers. Mm-hmm. We, we listen more than we talk. Yes, we uh, we replace assumptions with uh, open mindedness. Yeah, you know, and and when we're more open through our curiosity, we receive more data, we mm-hmm. receive more information that allows us to make better decisions. In my opinion, 100%. Um, and so when we make those better dec- decisions, we are more accurate with how we perceive things, Mm -hmm. you know, and in communication, which I think a large part of leadership is, is the ability to influence, to communicate, to to see, hear, and understand people. When we're curious about them, we're less focused on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that I think is another key component to presence through curiosity is like, tell me about you. What's your story? Where do you come from? What's important to you? Totally. What are your fears? How can I support you? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your values? Like, I care. Yeah. I care to know you. Right. Like, <laughs> isn't that funny that like, I think one of the characteristics of a leader is that they care yes. enough to like, listen and to show that their level of care through their, yeah, through their, ability to be present, their ability to listen, adapt, and implement the things that they've learned. Right. Um, Because I think we also live in a culture and society where it's like, whoever cares less wins. Right, or it's yeah, because like, cool emotions are liabilities. Or if I care too much about you, I'm then like, it's going to com- cool complicate. It's cool to care. Them. Give a damn, please. Yes. like about something. <laughs> we need more emotional intelligence, <laughs> yes. so we need you to feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. But curiosity is is. I think right on the money and um, because it shows that you, one of the things one of my mentors, David Meltzer says is be more interested than interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that becomes, um, if you do that and you enter into conversations with the, with the intent to get to know someone, not for what they can do for you, but who they are Mm -hmm. um, and how you can serve them, then your presence becomes compelling. Yes. And you didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, because it's not even about you. It's not. But, yeah. But if you want to be a compelling leader, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you just became way more compelling in your in your curiosity and in your maybe even in your silence than in your soapbox. Mm-hmm. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Beautiful. Cool. Well, as we wrap up here, is there anything that you feel the audience needs to hear that's coming through that you want to share? And and then after that, we can talk about where they can find you and how mm-hmm. they can get, you know, into your ecosystem. Yeah. Oh, man. I would just say, I think being willing to be coachable, to not know it all, to be curious. Mm-hmm to be interested um, 
isn't a weakness. Mm -hmm. It's a strength. It makes you more of a leader, makes you more human. It makes you more relatable and real and authentic and more positioned to um, become truly great yeah. whatever you want to be and whoever whatever you want to do. So to really allow yourself to adapt the the mentality that that is one of your the greatest skills you could have um, is to walk into the situations and the circumstances in your life and say, what can I learn? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what is this showing me? What's working? What's not? That's what it means to be coachable. And from that, we get better. And we can develop lives and relationships and careers um, and health that is sustainable, yeah. success that is sustainable. Um, it's not just this, you hit a peak and you're, you, you, know, you win for a little bit. I want people to develop lives that are, when they look back over the course of their life, they're like, I was living and operating mm -hmm. at a high level in all these areas of my life. And sure, we will go through the peaks and valleys, but sustainability only happens when you're willing to continually um, learn. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing I always say is like, the one constant <laughs> will be that there's always something, I will never have arrived. Mm -hmm. I'll never know it all. And if you can um, let go of the need to know it all, then you're so much closer to the success that you're looking for. Yeah than you think so beautiful continue thank continue you need to do that yeah <laughs> so where can everyone find you what, what's the easiest place oh man definitely connect with me on social i'm the tori gordon on instagram and tiktok hang out a lot mm -hmm. on those two platforms i've got uh the coachable podcast um you can definitely come yes. over there hang out with us we interview cool people <laughs> uh, like yourself and um and then torygordon.com if you want to learn anything else about my programs, working with me, breath work, um, tools and resources to to unlock your next level. That's Amazing. What I, that's what I'm doing. Come right. hang out on my side of the Internet. I would love to get to yeah. know you. Yeah. Well, keep keep leading from the front. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your wisdom today. Thank you for your presence. And I was excited to co-create with you <laughs> today. And I think we we created some magic. So sure. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It, yeah. was, it was a fun, it was a fun time. This is the crescendo, <laughs> the ending. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries.